that whole thing about being a movie star isn't part of my personality. What interests me is the character work. And what interests me about it is the aesthetics of being different people. What isn't interesting to me about it is how my hair is cut and what clothes I'm wearing. I, I can't care. I, I work hard, but I, I don't work out. I don't particularly diet. I worry about my face, you know, if my face is pretty. I do worry about that. But outside of that, the whole thing of, I can't explain it. The inflow, you know, the inflow about being a star. I just don't go for it. It just doesn't happen. I'm not interested, and it's not part of my life. The outflow of being an actor is every moment for me. She really strives for authenticity, to play it right down to the bone. I want to see Karen Black, because I love her acting. As a little boy, I had uh, I had a very big crush on her. Well, I'm a big fan of, of Five Easy Pieces. We, we, we rent that movie on a regular basis. I liked her in Can She Bake a Cherry Pie? I liked her in that crazy movie with that little guy who chased her around the house. The weird little teeth, do you remember that one? <laughs> Trilogy? Trilogy of Terror. Oh, I thought she was great in that. Ah, oh, Day of the Locust. Or maybe The Great Gatsby. Come back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean. Uh, why is that? Um, just everything about her, you know? Her eyes, her voice, everything. I think she always does very interesting characters, so I'm curious to see what she's like now. Hi, darling! There was this fireplace, and uh, this is a really cute story, and it's really true. And I stood up and I said, <clears throat> Well, I like to go to Memphis, but I don't know the way. And I'd like to tell you how I feel, but I don't know what to say. And he said, You've got the part. <laughs> Okay, Martina's all over that. Here we go. Last looking for picture, please. Karen Black is walking in. Don't walk into something now. See, I'm getting my accent on the way. My accent is from, she's from Cuba, uh, Missouri, which is 40 miles north of Arkansas. And um, what I did was I called some people up in Missouri. They live 12 miles north of Arkansas. But um, it's also a little bit Tennessee. And I, so I talked to this lady, and she was very wonderful to me. And, and all of her relatives were very wonderful to me. And she kept passing me over to other people, telling me she didn't have an accent anymore because she'd lived in St. Louis for so long. And she says, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really have an accent anymore. I mean, it's just gone. You know, I just don't have it anymore. But I'm sure Trudy has a, listen to Trudy, she's got it. And Trudy would go, now there, there it is. I'm talking it, there. God, I can't talk like that. It's like a rooster or something. Wah, 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 there, you know. So I just uh, had her say a lot of my lines. It comes a step. I had her say a lot of my lines, and I just wrote phonetically down everything she did. And so I have her accent, and I feel pretty confident with it. Well, we're doing a scene uh, where um, the little um, retarded girl wants to hug Trevor, who's the, the uh, leading actor. And I'm his mother. Roll sound. Rolling. And action. An odd thing about the character Bad in Dogtown boy. is that you can tell she's wicked in a way because Bad she doesn't ever let anyone finish their sentence. She wants you to hug her, honey. And they need very much off times okay, to finish their sentence. You're just like one of those little Reese's monkeys. As, as all of us do. And in that sense, she prepares a bulwark, her own space against okay, honey, any particular enough. inflow so that she can that's keep her enough. fantasies. And that's wicked. Let's have such fun while you're home. Let's go down to Blockbuster tomorrow and rent all them movies you've been in. <laughs> this way. 
And cut. Very good. Let's move on. Cut. I want to tell you about George, and I want to tell you about directors. Okay, what George does is he never loses an opportunity to enhance a person's self-respect. Never misses. You know, like, and I've had the strangest ideas in this movie, that he's just done them. He's going to correct you. He says, that was wonderful, but could you? I think she's one of the finest actresses working in American film. Um, I've been a huge fan of her work since uh, when I was a kid. I saw Five Easy Pieces, um, Day of the Locust, um, Nashville. Um, I just, uh, I love her work, and she's a fine actress. And uh, even I even loved her in some bad movies like Airport 75, I think, and uh, Trilogy of Terror and Burnt Offerings and family plot and um, she's just one of the best actresses I've worked with. See, it's kind of, I guess they call a low budget picture, which means that if you have an incredible amount of work to do, you do it in four days, five days. You know, you like uh, it's it's hard to explain. But when you when you're when you're acting it's it, I've I've read that it's like climbing a mountain. It takes a lot of I don't think that's true, but I've read that it takes a lot of you have to be right there, right on the money. You know, you have to like have all the feeling and all the character and all the, you know, remember all the words and everything. <laughs> and you do that hours and hours a day, and until you're drained. I mean, it makes you want to do a uh, blockbuster. So you're doing a blockbuster. You know that you're going to come and go. You know, you're going to a day and then you wait a week. This is draining. I, my, I'm just telling you, I, I'm sleepwalking. I'm just. What she does so well is she really captures the core character and she finds the focus of the character, the soul of the character, and then she illustrates different um, aspects and facets of behavior from that core. And she really builds from the inside out and everything she does, all the moments and nuances she does are so real. And um, I find her just really compelling and yesterday we did a very powerful poignant scene um, and I, she's, she just studies the part. She's very well disciplined and she's very focused and she spent 20 minutes by herself really getting into this sort of melancho melancholic state and um, and then it just it paid off wonderfully on the first take and she uh, she's fine. I really love to work with her again. She's, uh, it's a great, she's a great treasure. And she starts into well everybody has their ups and downs honey. Not enough time to really to scramble eggs. Not quite enough time but it's close. Mm -hmm. So if we had two identical pans or similar yeah. enough, you don't do. Uh, I'll check. Then, yeah, Anyhow, then she, then she, then she could start scrambling the eggs. Right. You know, oh, everyone has to look at John Travolta. Blah, 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 blah. John Travolta is linear. Blah, 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 blah. If it works for me, if it works for you. Yeah, and then, and then she, she could, you, she, because I probably won't be done with the eggs. I need a bowl and like right. all those things and right. toast and butter, and a toaster. Is there a toaster here? Yes, there is. Okay. Then I just take the pan that, that it has the eggs and put them on its plate. Mm -hmm. Because I'm pretty sure that it won't heat up until, I'm pretty sure I can't quite get eggs scrambled by the whole time in those three lines. Okay. I, ever, I, have to, I make the best scrambled eggs and the best fried eggs you've ever eaten in your life. I, I'll tell you, exact, I have exactly how to do it. Me? Yes, I do. I love it. Can, Can we shoot cookie? one, George? Sure. I can't believe she would not have a good sugar roll. Not what happened to her. This is, um, I think, the first breakfast that, that the, her son has had with her. He's come home after s s some years. Uh, let's uh, do a rehearsal now, please. Yeah, try it so early, and then Karen will say, uh, Oh, did you want to sleep in? Okay. And then beat, you had fun with your friends last night? Okay. Need to beat eggs. You like your little sign here? Happiness? <laughs> yes, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, good. Alright. Her robe? Huh? Her robe? Jesus is the reason for the season. Oh, that's great. I need to see that. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we want to have that. Yeah, no, I'm going to serve him in a second. Oh, excellent. I'm going to give this to him. Oh, that is excellent. Alright, ready? And action, surly. Oh, you want to sleep in? Do you have a good time with your friends, honey? Uh, how about you wanted to sleep in pause? You must have had a good time with your friends, honey. Okay. You know, with with Ru with Rose, there's always like some there's always a something else she's saying with what she's saying. <laughs> right. yeah. And action. It's early. 
Oh, did you want to sleep in? Must have had a good time with your friends. Okay. I remember that. I used and to she like keeps that saying all these wonderful things about him and, and, you know, sort of hallucinating with how important he is in Hollywood. And he's really just had a terrible time where he stole some money and uh, we had a very degrading experience, very, very degrading experience. And he's, you know, he's been living a practically depraved life. Uh, and so he'd like to tell her about that. He'd like to seek out her help. And she just isn't, isn't going to hear it. They say he took it to the grave with him, fighting to save the day pair manor. It's a terrible thing. And I know that he would have been very proud of you to have it. You bringing back the Van Horn name and all. Oh, we've had a terrible, terrible run of luck this family. We had 130 years of it. Mama, Mama. Well, you know, I feel like maybe there is a good point maybe for you to sit down next to him. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It's exactly it seems what I right. felt like doing. This family has had a run of bad luck. 130 years of it. Mama, I don't want this. Oh, now. Don't be so modest, sugar plum. Things are bad. I'm not what you think. Oh, everybody has his ups and downs. Even John Travolta has his lean no, years. No, 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 I've done things, Mom. But I mean, look at him now. He's got Time, Newsweek. We got, we got a cover of... Mama, no, you're not he listening. Want, he could even you're right. Get his, I want to tell you, right. a cover I'm of not National Geographic. A John Travolta cover of National Geographic. Well, eat your eggs, honey. Don't get all... <laughs> That's pretty good, Karen. You must have been worse than that. <laughs> Those are the grace I've ever seen. I'll be breaking for lunch. I'm not going to tell you again. That's a crazy lady let loose out of the insane asylum. <laughs> and I said, oh, uh -huh. and I went to rock up and I went to my room. It's me. <laughs> I want to mention to you that I am now without any makeup on at all of any kind on my face except Vaseline, which you got to say is not makeup. I have no eyes. They're very tiny and, uh, you know, on a regular film that you go don't see any. And, and I've had the most horrible problems in my life trying to give myself pretty eyes without making it look like I have too much makeup, but it takes shadowing and so forth. And people have said, oh, you've got to take all that shadow off. I've had J John Schlesinger screaming at me, your eyes are little black pits, your eyes are little black pits, because there's no light in my eyes. I say, look, if you put light in my eyes, I have eyes, and, and, and you believe all the little lines I draw around them. But if you just simply, um, just, you know, if you just do ordinary um, Cheryl Ladd lighting, who has a perfect face, I'm going to have little black pit. They're very close set. They're only this far apart. Look how close set they are. Only this far apart. As big as my lips. And one of my eyes is as big as a third of my lips. So I've been, you know, it's like I, I draw and paint. So there's the little paintings I do. Anyhow, such suffering, such suffering I've had with people who, you know, don't want me to wear eye makeup and yet expect me to have eyes. Now, since we're getting this set late today. I'm making up a brekkie. With low-fat mayonnaise, darling. And Dijonese mustard and all these, all these things. This is, this is the, uh, the posh, svelte life of the actor. Did I already put mustard in? Yes. This movie concerns Ada Lovelace, who is Lord and Lady Byron's daughter in around 1830, 1833. And she actually first conceived of the computer. She was a mathematical genius, and she put together the notions and the notes and diagrams for a computer. I was hired to play a Lady Byron, uh, Ada's mother uh, and Lord Byron's wife. And today she's going to see the machine, which will eventually become uh, a computer in the real world. It looks very cold out. Some of the machinery that this woman 
uh, I came up with is still extant. You go there and there it is, the same one. So this, this character sees it today in the film for the first time and, you know, she thinks it's pretty but useless. Uh -huh. yeah. See there? One of those nice people. Pretty darling, but... What group? What good is it? You're going past Walgreens. Maybe I can go in and get my script. Or maybe not. It's just up there. Your script? Yes, I left my script in Walgreens. I just wish I had my uh, script because I, I'm not really memorized. Are you sure they have it over there? We can swim by. No, no. I make everyone late. I think we have time. It's 1.20. We have to make it. We're supposed to, to be there at 120? No, no, it's 120 right now. No, it's 1220 right now. Yeah. And um, we have to get back on Van Ness, too. To... The present time mama, all, all her little notes are there. And it's nice to have. But I don't want to be late. I walked and walked and walked around looking for little places to buy my little girl presents. By the time I got to sit down to eat and start memorizing my lines, I was so depleted. I just thought, well, I'm not going to... Off, I can't offer much spirit to the learning process here. I'll just look them over and learn them later. And, and you know what? I was wrong. I should have done it. Because it, that's, that's a really good test of one's nature when you're really depleted and you're really exhausted and you just keep going. I think that, that, that life rewards you a lot for that. You have a green light, darling. Um, one time I was trying to... to I had written this movie called... Um, uh, light in the afternoon, and the producer, who was also a distributor, he kept wanting to have blood, you know, and car chases and so forth. And I, I just, it had nothing to do with these these very daffy, light-hearted people who kept, kept exchanging partners in a house and all this. Um, and finally, I learned that that there was a whole that he didn't want to go back to a certain location because it would cost what five thousand dollars or something, sure. and. And uh, and we weren't done with the location in any way, shape, or form. And the movie would make no sense without that without that location, none. And so I remember I got up in the morning and I just called everyone and everyone's brother and everyone's sister and everyone's uncle and aunt and to try to get five thousand dollars. And I'll never forget. I was so exhausted and enervated. And finally, ten o'clock at night, I raised it. Really? Yeah. Wow. And we went and we shot it. So I think that, that I should have memorized those lines yesterday when I was so exhausted. And that's what you have to do. I think you have to push through those moments. And I think you, you have a lot of win. I think you win a lot when you do that. You know what I mean? Not yeah. Yeah. Uh, more like her. Sorry. Well, she can't tie a tie. Yeah, that's what you're asking. Well, what is the costume? Or is it not the costume? It was uh, Sundance. I was in the Institute. It was one of the screenwriter guys they had. I was, too. Were you? Yes. Do you know Michelle Satter? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I did that with the one they're going to make next spring called Deep Purple. Yeah. Oh, so that's I missed fantastic. you. What year were you there? Uh, I was there in, in 89. Yeah. And then I went two years ago to um, to um, Equinox Film Festival, which is a part of the Sundance with Mike Bronte. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. What an amazing whole thing is going on here. Well, I'd you like know. I'd to read one or two of those. I've just finished hearing Jane Eyre yeah, for my yeah, accent yeah, sure. on this book. You can just lift your belt a little higher. I think that will work. Uh, that might be a... Oh, hmm, that works. The whole of the 1830 life is shot against blue screen. And you can, I've gone in and out of doors, which are just photographs. And you press a button and you suddenly see your scene with, in a beautiful castle, and in a beautiful, beautiful room. Two, 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 two
I mentioned it earlier. I'm looking for the And then it's true, might as well do touch ups while there's time. Yeah. <laughs> I like Seth. I like Seth. Bill, I'm going to move into the mark. So if I do it wrong, hold on a second. Yeah, thank you. All right? Yes, Karen, I agree. Thank you. Here it is. It's right there. Can you have that dotted? I believe we're ready. Okay. Well, what do you call it? This invention of yours. The Thank analytic you. engine. Oh. Tell me, Mr. Babbage. If I put in the question wrong, what the answer comes to us doing that one? Well, that would depend. Oh, it's all very pretty, but what good is it? I mean, the abacus takes up so much of this room and does exactly the same thing. Okay, good. Very good. Perfect. Lovely. So Stephen said, I hate this music, it's too sweet. And I, what do you think? I said, I think it's great, it's great. It's a woman's story, it is a sweet story, it is a sad story. Mm -hmm. You know, you use this music. So he uses it and he still can't stand it. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take it out. He's going to change it even now, after he's entered it into several festivals. Because that's how directors are. That's my lesson. They know what they know. You can't, yeah. they'll always return to it. You know? Mm -hmm. well, there would be like one or two shots that everybody oh. talked you into were okay right. and they still bother you. That's right. <laughs> like That's right. Someone go, oh shit, why am I going to listen to it? Right. <laughs> you know, and what it never leaves. It never, it never, it never gets leave. any better uh -huh. because you know what's right mm -hmm. and you're not paying attention to yourself. Right. And that's the way it is. Yeah. That's my message. If, if, you know, and what happens, a lot of people are soft and they're gentle and you, you, they need someone to say, do it your way. Life is inadvertent, and um, I love the inadvertency of life. And in order to, let's say, imitate life, you have to imitate its inadvertency. And in order to imitate its inadvertency, you have to prepare yourself in such a way that you are inadvertent. If you already have your speech patterns, you don't have to think about them. If you already have your body patterns mocked up to such a point that you don't have to think about them. If you already have what everybody is to you, you don't have to think about how you look at them or talk to them. And if you have, let's say, flow lines or, or, or space pushes and pulls and all this sort of thing, you're doing all this work that you, have, you don't think about, how am I saying this line? Because that's depth, and it's very, very bad art. I don't know much about method acting, but I did go to visit um, Strasberg's class once, and I was mortified. People were falling asleep on stage. I don't know. What, I mean, I think an act, actor's fairly busy. You know, he, he he's mocking up as I say this. He's he has this universe. He has this problem. He has he's thinking about how to get what he needs out of the life he's created for himself. You know, he's so much to do. And and were he to just do that, he would be relaxed because he's got his attention on all these things. He doesn't have to be able to go to sleep on stage. And everyone was so incredibly self-conscious. They were going, do I believe me? They were all doing, no matter what scene they were doing, they were on stage going, do I believe me? Do I believe me? Let's see, if I throw up, I'll believe me. Nonsense. Nothing to do with it. Let me tell you something. No one walking the planet says to himself, do I believe me? Not one person is sitting out there saying, do I believe me? So why are you incorporating into your acting technique? You're only going to harm yourself. It can't be good for you. And anyhow, I thought it was very silly. Then, I, then I'm there in front of Strasbourg, and he says, put your mascara on. So I'm putting my ma imaginary ma mascara on. After all, he says, you didn't look at yourself in the mirror, and that tells me something. Like, what did he tell you? What, what, what did he tell you? Well, I, what is he, a sphinx? What is he, like, you know, a pyramid? He's a teacher. Tell me what the hell you're talking about. Otherwise, you're belittling me, aren't you? I haven't been very smart about people. So it isn't, uh, the hardships are, are, are lurking there. And you do have to, as an actor, 
take care of yourself. I would like get married and go home. I wouldn't make, call anyone up for a year. I didn't make a phone call. I was raising a baby, you see. Yeah. Or I would wait for someone to ask me to do a movie, and it would be a stranger from Brazil, it would be a stranger from uh, London, somebody, and then I would do the best I could, and then we'd run, start running out of huge amounts of money, and then it was just um, stupid. It's actually the exact definition and manifestation of the word stupid, unknowingness of time, place, form, and event. Where was I? You are in Hollywood, Karen. You are not in Illinois. You can't just go home and raise a kid and never get on the phone. I had a crush on Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I really had a crush on him at that time, making it five easy pieces. But I had a boyfriend, and he wasn't interested in me. He liked very thin girls, very, very thin, and I have never been very, very thin. Jack is uh, a great being, He's a really great being. Um, when we were doing five easy pieces, I said to him one time, you know, Jack, some people just aren't there. They're just not in their heads. There's just no one home. No matter how you I'm sick of it, I'm not, you know. He said, Blackie, they're always there. You're always gonna find the person there in the middle, keep looking, and you're gonna find him. He has a, a high regard for his fellow man. And uh, he also has a tremendous, uh, including nature. He, some people, when there's danger or difficulty, will escape. Some will fight. And some will just reach out their hands and <laughs> shake the hand of the enemy. <laughs> and that's Jack. My son is drowning in the ocean. Drowning, truly drowning, dying. And this wonderful lad, Brian, he's going to save my son. And so he's, he's, he's going out there, and I'm screaming and crying, hysterical. And the camera but suddenly yeah. finds these beautiful, half-nude women playing volleyball. Uh -huh. And so the camera kind of, you know, stays with them and kind of follows their bodies around and kind of forgets these dying people with this big tragedy on the beach. <laughs> it's called Babe Watch. It's just sound. This girl was amazing today. She did a really good film. She's going to do an Academy Award. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. The best beep scene in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and here she is, Karen. I've been talking about you on the, on the camera. You look like you would be Vince. Really? You, I don't look Italian. No, you look like you would be um, a kind of a bouncy, happy, cheerful, smart guy. Right. And and so then that's Absolutely. what I that's what I thought. <laughs> so now you look like this, but only a personality because I don't know what you look like as a person. I know. I you told me for the phone. You thought I was short fat. Everybody's talking to me on the phone. I was short fat. Well, your name is Vince. So you get you get a lot of associative images of, of Vince. Right. Play acting. Uh, freaking out. You're gonna oh, have shit. to be what careful because they're gonna be yelling. Go ahead. No, no. Michael promised me we were gonna get levels. Probably scream like that. Yeah. Where is he? There you go. Where'd Here we go. go. We're gonna shoot the rehearsal. Okay, let's go. Everybody know what to do? No. There's not a lot written down. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. We're trying. Oh, <laughs> so, so you really want to put them? This is mom. Okay. Cold and freezing. Cold and freezing. Then, you see him. And then, freezing. You add, then you're gonna say here, you know, back off, whatever you see okay. there, and then you're gonna go in for it. Oh, he's all it. cold. And meanwhile, she's moaning and crying about her her son at that point. Here we go. Okay, bud. Check out the shiny board. Sure yeah. Okay. Good. Vince, yeah. let's give the girls back there a little bit more elaborate uh, workings to do. Hi, I'm Rebecca Cheney, and I'm related to Lon Cheney, who is deceased, but Lon Cheney Jr., all five, uh, fifth cousins, and our family uh, moved to Texas, so I came here to be an up and coming Cheney. <laughs> I am a chain. When, when, when the camera hits them, make, that's when they do more interesting stuff. And I'll tell you when the camera hits them, I'll go like, like that. Okay. I'll go like that. Action! Here's a, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Don't call 911 alone with all this time! Excuse me, I gotta get the Excuse me, ma'am, I need to melt them out. Ma'am, call 911! Oh, <laughs> 
I'm kind of in love with my mother. I certainly like her as well or better than anyone else on earth. Mother. <laughs> we get along so well. She restores me. I can go there very exhausted and out of sorts. And in two days after the visit, I'm just feeling so happy and so wonderful and glorious. Says, mother, you are my favorite person in the whole world. You are a Stradivarian. Um, have a woman. Have a woman. Oh, thank you, Karen. So I, I describe you to others, I, too. I was so relieved uh -huh. and comfortable. Not that. That. <laughs> so get my glasses on. No, no, read. no. If you had your glasses, you couldn't read that either. <laughs> Nobody can read my writing. That your, are my mother, mother, this life. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I want you to continue to be as you are, all my love. She's an award-winning novelist. She's written short stories that have been sold all over the country, different magazines and so forth. And we just love each other so much. And I call her all the time and keep up with everything. <laughs> it makes you perfect because you're a redhead. Why don't we ramp it up? Do you want to wear it? Let me see that one. I guess nobody ever expected that you would be in a, be such a big success. Uh huh. Because you just were, you weren't the kind of group aggressive or anything or ambitious. I remember how we discovered what a beautiful voice you had. You know when we had that you were taking ballet lessons and she wanted you to be Cinderella in this little play. <coughs> and uh, how old were you? Is it eleven years old or so? It sounds way too old. Well, you must have been eight or nine then, but okay. you were seven. And she wanted you to do, part, and do this little singing thing, and so we took you to a teacher to have, a, have you give a few lessons, and she said you had a perfect pitch and you had a beautiful voice, you know. Uh -huh. And I remember when you sang your little song <clears throat> on the stage, and I was, I was in the wings watching, and it, it was so beautiful, you know, just, and you, there was something about the way you did it. I, I watched in the audience, and they were, they were just enthralled, like I say, like, gee, this kid has something. <laughs> <laughs> something. But anyway, you showed your talent early. What I think is the most interesting out of all of this is how no one expected that I would be smart and no one expected that I would be able to sing. That's right. And no one expected that I would ever, you know, really be successful in the movies because I was a, a quiet That's person. Right. I noticed that there's a certain kind of chutzpah. Kind of what? Um, verb and ruthlessness and ambition that I've seen in Bette Midler, seen in her. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one time she found I could sing and fear passed over her face. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, it's re not rational. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that uh, Goldie Hawn has that. Mm -hmm. And there, it's just some kind of a... Joan Crawford had it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's, it's a certain thing that I think I do lack. I do lack it. And I'm a cheap date in life, you know. I'm really happy. Agatha Christie once said, the p successful people are people who are not happy unless they're successful. They're not happy. If you can get them happy before they're really successful, they're not going to make it in that way. And I have to say, I think it describes me. I'm a cheap date in life. I'm happy already. I'm 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 pretty happy. Well, your nature is, is is separated from your career. You're you're a kind of person who enjoys every moment. I remember her uh, many many movies uh, I uh, saw in Russia, and uh, many Russians uh, remember her and uh, beautiful beautiful face, beautiful acting in the movie. I, 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 I personally, I love her Dave Lopes. She's, she's so great. And, uh, and many others, with Hitchcock and, and other movies. And she performed, in our movie, she performed great, greatest part. And uh, I just uh, have very great respect for her. Actually, I love her. Doing this movie 
for a wonderful man, darling Russian man. His name is Rodion the Hapatov. And so I'm going to complain now. Um, just because it's information I don't think very many people ever hear about what it's like to make a movie. I have a very nice room, and that's well. Now, but I worry about the making of the movie. I have concerns about it. I want it to go well. Why? Because I'm part of the group, so I want their purposes to be fulfilled. I want it to be good. So I keep thinking how they could be doing something better than what they're doing. For example, why don't they phone me and say, we're ready for you on the set? Because when they send someone all the way from the other floor down the elevator to get, they lose five minutes. See? They could be doing that. And then also, all actors have this problem on almost all movies. They say, we're ready for you. Well, an actor is not a doll or a mannequin. An actor eats a grape and they lose some of their lipstick. They sweat and their powder is gone. Uh, my hair it gets curlier every 10 minutes. It frizzes and frizzes and frizzes. So if they would say, we'll, we'll need you in 10 minutes, come in 10 minutes, hello, Karen, be here in 10 minutes already, they would save 15 minutes. The 10 minutes that it takes me to get ready, and every actor, and especially every actress, to get ready to be on camera, and the five minutes it takes for someone to pat her down here and knock on my door and ask me. So that kind of thing, you know, I notice. And that's a universal thing. That, that happens on, on uh, every picture. There's no prediction. There's just no, no one will predict for the performer. They won't say, we'll probably need, unless you ask. They will sometimes tell you, we'll need you, in. but generally you've got to ask. And if you don't ask, you can sit there and wait for the next shot for a half an hour, and nobody tells you, oh, oh, we won't need you for an hour and a half. You can go to your room. They, you know. So that's another complaint. But this is a universal complaint. All actors are trying. Then the other thing is, generally people will allow me after 25 years to do my own makeup because I know how to, you know, even in this little film, you, you know, I've been seen with no eyes at all when I didn't draw them on yet. Now I have these big glamorous eyes. I kind of know how to glue them on and glue them up and make all these drawings around my eyes. Um, but when they know you're going to do your own makeup, come, come with me. They know you, you, you're going to do your own makeup, they don't look at you. You could have like schmata here, you know, they don't say, oh, and by the way, your, your, uh, your mascara came down to here. I can't see my face. Talk to me. Hello. <laughs> well, I should be walking this way then, shouldn't I? <laughs> We're Much about better. five minutes away. Is that oh good for you? Oh my God! Very good. We're Congratulations. We're moving really fast. Well, thank you. This okay. Is a, so I'll just uh, yeah, lovely. It's a great Do my potato hana hana. I'll be there. Potato hana hana hana. See you downstairs. About okay, five. Good. Thank okay, you. I stand corrected. They did exactly what I said they don't do. You gotta cut this part out. Working with her, and especially in her close eyes, she performs so many difficult changes. Some and smile and and angriness and everything. It's so great. Here we go. And shh. Action. She was very professional. She's very simple. She's very uh, accurate. She is. Or, she uh, always. Um, prepare for what she's doing. She's not like, I don't know what to do. She knows what to do. All, always, each moment of her existing on the screen, uh, she's different. She's happy and she uh, has something else inside and she covered this. She's a great actress, it's no doubt. Cut. Good. And can you do this stuff a little bit uh, earlier? What do you feel? Leaning the chair back. Yeah. Yes, of course. A little bit earlier. Right. Do you miss your you miss your father a lot, don't you? 
Yes. That's when he should pull the chair. Right. This is a this is a speed. This is a speed. This is a speed. Great. Yeah. This is a speed. Nice. This is beautiful. Rodion. This is beautiful. Wonderful. You created a wonderful thing here. <laughs> Can you help me just put your hands aside? You're not? Can we need to move you aside? I have a loom here. I'll be right. I'll get the loom here. I forgot my mirror. That's okay. Thank you. Let's do it. Give me my kit. What? What? He wants to go outside. He wants to step away from the set. Oh, cool air. Okay. The character in Modern Rhapsody as written was lofty and had all the answers. And I simply hated that notion because I just don't think anyone has all the answers. Anyone who does have answers doesn't run around thinking they have all the answers or they're kind of snotty, really. And I met the character, the woman, actually, in the Yucatan, that the character was written after. What I did was um, I made her just very loving and very light and very playful. And, and I took the onus off that wisdom. Because wisdom really, if you have wisdom, you're happy. And if you don't, you're sad and unhappy. And so I thought that she would be happy. Tony only loves two types of women, foreign and domestic. <laughs> <laughs> the, the DP was Mario Garcia, but he had translucent skin and always, I always wanted to kiss him on the cheeks and hug him and he was very beautiful. And he would wait for the sun, set mirrors around the room, he'd wait for the sun to come at an angle through the window and then the light would be reflected around the room in the most glorious way. Suelo, look. He was uh, very brilliant. <laughs> you guys are going to creep up and around. You want to know what's going on. Can I have Poppy, Peter, and Ruth, please? I need a short verse. Yeah. I just screamed in your ear. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Careful the edge of the pool. I just don't want you to fall in. The preacher is going to be leading Sissy away. As he's leading Sissy away, you guys are going to creep up and around. You want to know what's going on? Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, just yeah, on the spit. I'm the leader of the cult, and uh, I'm incredibly into this believing thing. And we also take lots of blue droplets of things, so I'm really drugged all the time. And that's the real reason <laughs> for my behavior. But um. And I sing everything, and I'm, and I'm sort of like, I guess out of my mind. I think maybe they need you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Karen's a special lady. She uh, takes everything in, you know? Everything around her and all the people around her. She doesn't miss a thing. She takes it all in and then gives it back to you. <laughs> I was in Florida, I was making a movie, and I was pretty much making it for money. And I liked it that let me be pretty, because often they made me not pretty at all in movies. And, and the costume person came, but she was the producer's wife, and she had no costume schedule. So it was my, my responsibility to call the AD, to find all the name, numbers of the scenes, one. Yeah? Request it on set, please. Okay, thanks. I can talk as we go, though. Which way do we go? Okay, don't, don't forget now. This, this lady's boyfriend. Just, uh, a pick. If I give him something, can he yes. keep it for you? She, 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 he wrote the character I did in, in um, Children of the Corn, which is a really, really good writing. I'm going to be really excited to meet him. Anyhow, um, so that was very stressful, and then I mean, it turned out like 
all these uh, all these things would go on like that. And I and I started feeling like, you know, what am I doing? I gotta stop being an actress and all this. This is just too painful and horrible. And also, I got very, very, very tired because they, of course, did all my scenes in a row. And then, as I was leaving, they wanted a ticket back, which had been part of our deal. I mean, the, the producer's assistant actually said, "We have this ticket back." I said, "So I'm doing the movie." And uh, so. I was just very stressed out, and when I got back, one day later I was starting this movie, and then I found out I've got a movie in London, and I had about a thousand things to manage, and I have no organization, nobody helped me to do it, so I'm getting really, really sick. That's all I'm getting in the moment now. Just quick sticks. I would take a dollar. love it if you stayed for the coverage of The Preacher so that we could have off-camera lines for him. Okay? That'd be great. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay. She's very beautiful. I want to, I want to go home. So tired. I'm gonna go get to sleep. Just like the table. Oh, very soon. Feeling tired. I have a lovely, lovely girl coming over to pack me tonight. Oh, you can't pack. You're going away. Can you scramble eggs? I have to say Jerry. that the character in the hunger, darling, just appeared. Well, can you? Light cooking. I like scrambled eggs. I like them a lot. Jerry, have you met Steph? When I wasn't um, working, I went to, to, to the location, sat in the wheelchair, and rode around a lot so I could be sure to do that properly. Well, Jerry, what do you think? Isn't she charming? I don't know what happened. I just read it, read it, read it, and I just happened. Look at me. Do I look as though I have a headache? I'll wait for my morphine, thank you very much. It was directed by Ridley Scott's son, Jake. And I think, you know, that his sense, sensibility about place is shades of his father, Ridley. The surgery where I would get my shots Don't tease. was so white, it was like, you know, I thought you were looking at black and white film. There is no dignity in decay. The body, you know, has an uncanny ability to compensate for its own deficiencies. I see her like this because she's she's went to Berkeley and she. And she's just, and she's a blind <laughs> psychiatrist. So what she would do is just wash and wear hair, just just like that. And I think that'll work really yes. good. And I think this is a good look for a gay blind psychiatrist. <laughs> so what, you want to try the other wig? Yeah. Okay. But I think that this, and it, we want to use normal hair anyway. So okay. Probably so, better. So you like this better yeah. right now? You think that's probably better? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think you hold it to you. I know I do. Okay. No, I Pull it down. That's interesting. Can I brush it? That's interesting too, though. You look pretty sexy. And it looks like the receptionist. Let's see. That's just me. See. That's not part in the middle. Yeah. You do it how you want. See, that's pretty beautiful. Better than I thought. Yeah. You look sexy. And she is so, I think it's great. That is so different. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that good? Yeah, it's really great. You know, yeah. she talks like this. Yes, she does. <laughs> what are you laughing at there? She does that, so she talks. I like that a lot better. She looks like a Nini. She does. That's what she is, okay. Yay! I studied and watched blind people for two days. One was at the Braille Institute, and one was at this, this coffee mornings that they have uh, in Glendale. No, not Can I have another one of the kiss just to make sure I have the exposure right? Oh, well, I don't want to just do anything as, as, Keep your, don't put your arms as slavish as that, but <laughs> see, I got to laugh. I got to laugh out of it. Pinky. <laughs> Ah, nothing, Eddie.
How many did you get? Ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> You're demented. That's great. I'm what? He's like a disturbed guy. And that She's was a fabulous. Player. That was great. <laughs> Roll sound. Rolling. Hey. Blind people oh, I'm make oh, no. very swift, certain to be sorry. Uh, swerves of the head to the talk to the person to their right, to their left. You smell very sweet, Stella. Completely very missing sweet. where the person really is sitting, Thanks. but with every certainty. And they talk right over there to the person's shoulder Hi. behind the person's there. head. Uh, my name is Callie. Alex. Oh, uh, you can shake it harder than that. It's all what it is, you know. It isn't anything I don't think that one can suppose. You have to go witness it. <laughs> oh, you're a lovely girl. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you make his language picture. Yeah, I just really love our little home and, and that we're all sort of in show business. My little girl's doing play after play. And she's learning the violin. Um, and she paints. But she's also this champion softball player, and she loves that. But Stephen is, um, he's very, very handsome. He's one of the most handsome men I've ever seen. And I, I really think he's one of the most handsome men anyone has ever seen. And I don't know why he's in love with me, but he seems to be in love with me. And he's really a very huge heart. He is a hunk. He is an angel hunk. And we've been together 15 years. I got there two minutes before the deadline. Come back, Stephen. He's just getting food. He can't wait. He is a darling. He's an angel. I spent some time with his brother. And um, he's uh, very, very handsome. And he's a very, he's an angel and a very good, beautiful soul, the way that my husband is. So every once in a while I get this crush and I say to Stephen, Stephen, I'm in love with your brother. And if he comes to the door, I'm afraid I'll have to go away with him. And Stephen says, yeah, you know, all the women feel that way. <laughs> but I saw him a lot in San Francisco. It was very good for me to do a nightly performance. And my exact goal is that people go home with something that they can look back on in their memory and never forget. You know, because it's just so open. I'm so open. I really cry. and Everybody cries. There was a lady who came... You know, people come back and back to the shows. One lady came back and she kept hugging me and sticking her face on my face. And it's okay because during the show they feel close to me. And then it continues when the show is over. They, the, the differentiation between social and aesthetic sometimes does not become reinstated. So that's a very, that's a very good thing. Pretty frightened to do my show. It's a lazy afternoon. And I'm very close to the audience when um when I'm doing the show and I cry and they cry with me and I laugh and they laugh a lot. It's very oh God, overwhelmingly alive. I studied opera and with my singing as well as acting, I, I have lots of different ways of singing. I sing over, and I sing under, and I sing hello, and I sing da 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 da, and I sing all kinds of different ways, and they're all in my show. But you know what's like? You know what's like my character work? Will the real Karen Black please stand up? And I think that in some ways, it's a trick.